Hey, what's up guys? I'm Hop, TFB TV's 40 Cal Apologist. Today we're going to be taking a look at Sig Sauer's first polymer framed pistol. This is the Sig Pro SP2340. We're also going to be testing a conversion barrel in this and shooting some 357 Sig. So stick around. So this is the first model of the SIG Pro. This is the SP2340. It's chambered in 40 Smith & Wesson. It was released in 1998. The following year, SIG introduced the 2009, which was chambered in 9mm. And that is actually the pistol that Jason Bourne finds in his uh, safety deposit box in the movie Bourne Identity. I'm not sure if you needed to know that, but I knew that, and I have to get this useless information out of my brain somehow. The SIG Pro pistols were a collaborative effort between European SIG and American SIG. So these uppers are made in Switzerland and lowers were made in Exeter, New Hampshire. This is still considered to be one of the SIG P series of pistols. So it basically shares the same double action, single action lock work and the same recoil system with the 226. The differences with a SIG Pro is that it uses a plastic frame, uses a plastic wraparound grip module. These do have magazine disconnects, that was a very common feature on police pistols of the time. And these also have a proprietary rail that SIG developed in the late 90s. Everybody was doing it back then. It's really hard to find accessories for now, but that was a feature back in the day. This gun was made in 1998, so this was during the assault weapons ban. This one, however, is a police trade-in model, so it actually does have the restricted law enforcement-only magazines. Original capacity was 12 rounds of 40 Smith & Wesson. You can see these are also marked for 357 SIG. We will get to that in a little bit. When I got this one, it was in pretty rough condition. The grip module was totally beat up, but I just bought a replacement one. They're still available on the market. They're actually not that hard to find, so that's good as new. This one had factory night sights when it was made in 1998. The half-life of tritium, I think, is about seven years, so that was three half-lifes ago, and there's pretty much no glow left in them, although they're still functional as blackout sights. These share the same sight dovetail pattern as the other SIG P-Series pistols, so it's very easy to get replacement sights for these. So how does it shoot? It's an old SIG, shoots like an old SIG. These guns have a very high bore axis, you can't get your hand very high up, and also this is a 40 Smith & Wesson, so it is fairly flippy. Technically, this is a compact. It's got a 12 round capacity of 40 Smith & Wesson, 15 round capacity in nine millimeter, I believe, and it's got, I think, a 3.9 inch barrel. So this is, in theory, sort of a Glock 19 sized gun. In practice, not so much. Uh, this is very large and heavy, very thick as well for a compact. This is actually the original standard grip size module. There was an even larger grip size module. I can't really find them uh, for sale online and I wouldn't want to use one anyway. I already have enough of a time trying to get my hand around this thing. And I have pretty big hands as well. Uh, all the controls are still in reach. Magazine release, nice uh, textured triangular button, easy to get. The slide lock lever is very easy to get to. That's a problem I always have with SIGs. If I'm not careful with my thumb placement, I am used to shooting Glocks, then I will ride that lever and it won't lock open on empty. Uh, also, a lot of the times when I'll reach for the slide lock, I'm expecting to reach a little farther forward, and I'll hit the decocker lever instead. If you shoot mostly SIGs, it's not going to be a problem, you get used to it. If you shoot something else and try to switch over to SIG, it'll probably throw you off for a little bit. Trigger's pretty good. Double action is long, fairly heavy, but it is also smooth. Single action, eh, it's got a lot of take up, a lot of slop, but it's got a pretty crisp break. And the reset is very audible, very tactile. It's pretty nice, very shootable. Of all the 40 caliber pistols that I own, which is quite a lot, this one is about middle of the pack. Should shoot a little bit better when we switch it over to 357 SIG. So let's try that right now. The current model of the SIG Pro series is the SP2022. That one is available in 9mm and 40 Smith & Wesson. That was the replacement for the original SP2340 and the SP2009. They are almost identical. The SP2022 does have a legitimate 1913 rail on the dust cover, which is a lot more useful than this weird proprietary thing. The upshot of that gun still being in production is that you can still get magazines, you can still get barrels, you can still get sights. Everything should interchange with the older SP2340 and 2009. Operative word being should. SIG doesn't necessarily say. 
that you can buy one of these drop-in conversion barrels for a 2022 and run it into the 2340. But as far as I know, you can, so we're gonna try it out. So we got magazines. They are marked for 40 Smith & Wesson and 357 SIG. Capacity is going to be 12 rounds for both of them. And we've got a conversion barrel. This is officially sold as a conversion barrel for a 40 Smith & Wesson SP2022, which should be almost identical, parts interchangeable with the 2340. There are also some differences with the SIG Pros. Some of them have a loaded chamber indicator cut in the barrel and a loaded chamber indicator system in the slide. We shouldn't be dealing with any of that today, but it still could be an issue, so make sure you do your research before you start buying barrels for these. So take down, super easy, lock the slide back, track it to the takedown notch, poke this lever out, pull it down. Recoil spring is not captive on these, but it's, it's also well designed, it doesn't go flying or anything like that. Here we have our very old, very beat up 40 Smith & Wesson barrel and our new 357 SIG barrel. So as you can see, they've got the same closed cam path slot cut. Everything about them looks completely identical to me. So I don't think we're going to die today. But I reserve the right to be wrong about that. Retract the slide a little bit, get the lever started, retract the slide all the way, drop the lever all the way in. And now we have a 357 SIG chambered SIG SP2340. We're going to be shooting some legitimate SIG Sauer branded 357 SIG. Uh, this stuff is crazy expensive. I know you can buy it probably cheaper in bulk if you can find it. I bought two boxes of this for $29 each. So uh, I'm not planning to shoot a whole heck of a lot of 357 SIG. Okay, first shots, 357 conversion barrel. Chambered. Decocked. Let's go ahead and give it the old, the old uh, extremely safe firing position. Failure to return to battery. May have limp wristed that one a little bit. Let's go ahead and just give it four more. Hasn't blown up, and it appears to function. And honestly, it doesn't feel a whole lot different from shooting 40 Smith & Wesson. Another thing we have to keep in mind when shooting the conversion barrel is that the 40 Smith & Wesson chambered SIGs have got a number eight rear sight and a number eight front sight. They recommend when shooting 357 SIG or nine millimeter to use a number eight rear with a number six front. So in theory, my point of impact will have shifted from putting this barrel in with a completely different type, type of ammunition load. I haven't changed the sights. I probably won't bother changing the sights because this is still mostly gonna shoot 40 Smith & Wesson. Let's go ahead and put it on paper, see if we can confirm between the two if the point of impact actually does shift. So going to shoot lower left, five rounds, 357 SIG, swap back over to the 40, shoot five rounds on the lower right. See how we do. Failure to return to battery. Getting some interesting looking uh, smear marks on the barrel, but they kind of wipe off, so I'm not really sure what the hell's going on with that. I'm gonna guess there's at least some breaking period when you're trying to use the wrong barrel for the wrong gun. So, five rounds, 40 Smith & Wesson, bottom right, still using the same uh, dead hold, combat hold, as on the left. Let's survey the damage we have over here. This is the 357 barrel. This is the 40 Smith & Wesson barrel. So on these ones, the flyers are high. On these ones, the flyers are low. But yes, we do have about, eh, I wouldn't call that an entire inch, but we do have a slight shift, vertical shift, when shooting the different ammunition with the same sights. So both of these were using a combat hold directly over the bullseye, which is just the way that I like to shoot. This is where the 40 is grouping, and this is where the 37 Sig is grouping. We're going to go ahead and just shoot a couple more magazines, see if we can confirm function and that it doesn't blow up. Hmm, auto forwarding. Awesome.
A little bit of hesitation to go into battery sometimes here. Hopefully that's just part of the break-in. Seems to be working so far. Just uh, the usual disclaimer. Obviously this barrel is supposed to be for a 40 caliber 2022. This is an SP2340. It's not the same gun. It's very, very close to the same gun, which is why I'm pretty sure I can get away with it. But, you know, don't try this at home. Uh, I'm expendable. You guys aren't. Can't wait for somebody at SIG to watch this video and send me an email saying, what the hell are you doing? Don't you realize you almost blew yourself up and died? Probably won't happen though, right? If they didn't want me to shoot this thing, they shouldn't have made the barrel fit. If anybody ever tells you that 357 SIG shoots like 9mm, uh, they're half right. This is 125 grain FMJ and it shoots like 147 plus P, so it shoots like some form of 9mm, just not the form that you've ever actually shot before. Compared to a 9mm SIG 229, which is in size and function almost identical to this, this is not a 9mm. It's not even close. I'm not the world's biggest fan of 357 SIG. It seems to me like what you get is 9mm expansion, 9mm penetration, 40 Smith & Wesson capacity, and 357 Magnum hearing damage. I know there's some defenders out there, and as long as you're happy paying 10mm prices for 9mm performance, then knock yourselves out. I really enjoy the SIG Pro series pistols. I actually think they're a little bit better than the 226 and the derivative metal framed guns. They're also significantly cheaper. Should you buy an SP2340? No. If you're interested in a SIG Pro, you should probably just get the SP2022. It's basically the exact same gun, but it's got a real accessory rail on it, and it's just commercially available a lot more than these, these old guns are. Thanks for watching, guys. Let me know if you enjoyed this different format of video. It's not my usual style, but it was kind of fun to mix it up a little bit. TFB TV is supported by our sponsors, Ventura Munitions and Top Gun Supply. Go ahead and check them out. They support this show. We really appreciate it. We are also supported directly by our viewers via Subscribestar and Patreon. You can find links to those in the video description. YouTube is not our biggest fan in the world, so it's really you guys that keeps us going. James does a lot of cool giveaways and some sneak preview videos for patrons and Subscribestar guys, so check it out if you're interested. See you guys next time.